Hello everybody and welcome to Gospel on the Go with Rachel for Sunday the 14th of January. This is the second Sunday after Epiphany. Um, today really is, this is the worship. I was supposed to be in Vermilion to lead worship um, for the community there and the block heater in my car seems to have pooched out. Um, I'm hoping it's just an extension cord problem but we'll have to get it fixed early this week. So I will not be able to be at Vermilion Lodge tomorrow or today, Sunday, nor will I be there tomorrow, Monday. That has been rescheduled for some time in February, and I'll let you know, folks, about that as soon as I can. So today is, I think there will be worship in Vermilion, or sorry, in Edgerton and Wainwright, um, but I will be hunkered down in my house, unable to go anywhere because, well, it's minus 50 degrees and my car won't start. So we'll hope for the best and maybe we'll get this block heater thing fixed quickly. We begin this day with our land acknowledgement. As we gather this day, we commit ourselves to seeking new ways of being in relationship and new ways of acknowledging and living out our relationships with our Indigenous siblings. We know that we hold an important responsibility to acknowledge the grounds on which we are privileged to gather as we worship the Creator. In humility and gentleness, we acknowledge that we live on Treaty 6 territory this land that was first shared by Creator with the Cree, Nakota Sioux, Blackfoot, Dene, Sarsi, Salto, and Métis Nations. In light of our history and understanding of our role as Treaty 6 people, we dedicate ourselves to moving forward in the spirit of partnership, collaboration, and reconciliation as we learn together and contemplate the possibilities that lay ahead. Um, because this was going to be a nursing home service, everything was printed in the bulletin. So I'm going to tell you what the hymns were as well and, and do the full, you know, the, the whole enchilada here today um, in case you have a hymn book and would like to follow along. <laughs> the opening hymn was, called, was You Call This Lord to Be. We continue with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the, of the Father. Amen. And our prayer for for Dayspring Ministries. Creator God, you have commissioned us to be bearers of light to your world. As you have given to us the Dayspring, who is Jesus Christ our Lord, so encourage us to share him with all whom we meet. Allow us the privilege and the responsibility to carry the light of your Dayspring into the communities in which we live, work, and play, the communities you call us to serve. With your Holy Spirit's presence and guidance, bring hope or may our work as Dayspring Ministries bring hope, peace, and joy to your world. In the name of the Dayspring, who is Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. And our prayer for new leadership. God of all hope and peace, we thank you that you are leading us forward into a new time of ministry. Give us wisdom and discernment that we might hear your voice. Bless the people you are leading to us who will offer us their gifts and companionship as we move into a time of transition and into our future ministry. May we prepare ourselves for them as you prepare them for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And the collect of the day, sorry, is taken. Uh, it's on page 349 if you are following along in the book of Alternative Services. Almighty God, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. May your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, 
that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the proclamation of the word, and the first reading is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 20. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the, world, to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house, from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever, for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God so do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 139, verses 1 to 6 and 13 to 18. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our second lesson is taken from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 12 to 20. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. 
and God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, and which you have from God, and you are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is Awake, Awake, Fling Off the Night. And our gospel lesson is taken from John 1, verses 43 to 51. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip met Philip van Nathaniel and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And Nathaniel said to him, Can anything good come from, from Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathaniel coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last Sunday, we celebrated the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. That is an extremely important day to celebrate because it really marks the beginning of Jesus' ministry due to three years of earthly ministry, leading from his baptism to his triumphal entry into Jerusalem at the celebration of the Passover, or Palm and, or, and Passion Sunday for us. In his baptism, Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit to begin the work God had given him to the world to do. For the next three years, Jesus would walk and teach, heal and share miracles, all to the end that the people would come to know the truth of God's love and commitment to them. Well, Jesus, as Emmanuel, God with us, didn't really technically need to be baptized and spend those three years as an itinerant preacher, teacher, healer, and miracle worker for his own sake. He did need to do those things for our sake. Because he, li he lived out an earthly example of what God asks of us, we know that it can be done. We are quite capable of following the call God has placed on our lives too. The difference is in expectation. God will not ask that we give up our lives for the world or make miracles happen either. God does expect, however, that the way in which we live, the example we set, the words we use, the decisions we make, will show Jesus to the world. God's call on our lives is pretty straightforward and simple. Live as a Christian, a little Christ, and proclaim to the world the good news of God in Christ. That's it, in a nutshell. Be a Christian, live as a Christian, love as a Christian, share Christ with others. Now that we have moved into the season of Epiphany, we begin walking this Christian journey from baptism to the cross with Jesus. Soon enough, on Ash Wednesday, which is Valentine's Day this year, we will take that fork in the road that Jesus took ahead of us that leads to the cross in Jerusalem. We walk in this epiphany season through those early days of his ministry when everyone was still getting used to this new way of being. Jesus was no longer just the apprentice carpenter with incredible charisma. Now he was this guy out of Nazareth who was speaking with authority 
inviting people to follow him and finding himself surrounded by growing crowds as he taught them things that were very familiar but had a new edge to them. And as he journeyed, so his following grew. As his following grew, so the attention, so did the attention of those who felt threatened by him. The irony was that he was indeed no threat to them whatsoever. The threat came in the truth he shared in such a new way that all of what they believed and held dear was coming to be at risk. Jesus was speaking the truth that God had been sharing for generations and generations. The problem was that the people had stopped listening for God's truth and were more engaged in the truth they molded to their own liking. In the reading from 1 Samuel, we hear that that hard truth that God speaks to Eli and his family through the young boy become prophet Samuel. Two things are happening here. First, Samuel is being called directly by God. That's a pretty significant thing that's happening. The other thing we need to pay attention to is what God is asking Samuel to do. God tells Samuel to tell Eli that his house, his family, is on the way down. They have become corrupt, and God is preparing for some old-school house cleaning. The amazing reality of this story, beyond the call of Samuel, is how Eli reacts to this prophesy, prophecy the young boy shared with him. Rather than denying the corruption or railing against its truth, Eli encourages Samuel to speak and then receives the truth with grace and belief. Eli said to Samuel, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. And after he had listened to God's decision, Eli responded, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. I imagine that many other young men would have challenged young Sam, sorry, many other men would have challenged young Samuel or railed against God's decision if they would even have had the grace to admit that God's judgment was fair. But not Eli. Even though this condemnation of him and his family has come down, he was willing to receive to receive it and still praise the Lord, for Eli trusted in God's wisdom. In the Gospel lesson, we hear another call story, as Jesus invites Philip and then Philip invites Nathaniel to come and join Jesus too. While Philip is eager to jump on board, Nathaniel is a bit more reluctant. Nathaniel needs a bit of convincing, but that doesn't deter Jesus, nor does Jesus make Nathaniel feel silly for not jumping too. Jesus simply meets Nathaniel where he is, answers his questions, and shows him the way. This Sunday after the baptism of the Lord and the first day of our communal journey with Jesus through the Judean countryside on the way to Jerusalem brings with it these four different ways that God calls out to us. Samuel, Eli, Philip, and Nathaniel. The four calls are all different, and just as different as the men were different. Each call has its own unique answer. Each call, Samuel is slow to recognize that the voice he is hearing is indeed God's. Eli understands that God is talking to him through Samuel, and although what he is told is harsh, he is accepting and understanding. Philip jumps forward when Jesus said to him, Follow me, immediately. And Nathaniel is skeptical and demands answers. The common denominators in each of these four call stories are the fact that God was indeed calling and the fact that each man answered that call. Their own journeys as to how they answered God's call are as unique as they are. And that is great news for us. We are each being called by God right now. Some of us, like Philip, might be able to hear God's voice clearly calling us and sharing the next step in the plan set for us and our ministry. Others may not be able to hear so well right away, like Samuel, who needed that call multiple times. And if that's the case, don't worry. When the time is right, you will know. God will have you know. If you are leery of, understand, of answering a call you don't understand, like Nathaniel, be patient, because God is patient with you. And if you might be hearing God sharing with you that maybe things in your life aren't quite the way they should be, like Eli, listen up. God's plans are always 
better than our own, even if it doesn't seem like that at first. This journey we are making as Christians, Christ followers, through Epiphany and into Lent, is one which will train us up and teach us in preparation for the work we do after Easter in the post-resurrection world God gives us in Jesus' name, where we are called to preach and teach and share the love of Jesus with all whom we meet. But first, we must take that first step of saying with Nathaniel and Philip, Eli and Samuel, Yes, I believe you are the Son of God, and I will answer your call. It's the first step, and the next one will be shown to you. I promise. Amen. As we continue in our service today, we, we will share in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue now with our prayers of the people. As a people of hope and anticipation, we pray for those who have asked for prayer, those whose leadership we rely upon, those who carry the gospel to the peoples around them. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Church of the Province of Southeast Asia. In our national cycle of prayer, we pray for Dr. Andrea Mann, Director and the staff of Global Relations, Ryan Weston, Lead Animator, Public Witness for Social and Ecological Justice, Executive Director Will Potsma, and the staff of the Primates World Relief and Development Fund. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, Executive Director Karen Achtelstetter and the staff of Canadian Lutheran World Relief, and the assistants to the Bishop and the staff of the Eastern Synod. In the Council of the North, we pray for the Indigenous Ministries of the Diocese of Athabasca. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Athabasca, the Right Reverend David Greenwood Bishop, for the Diocese of Edmonton, Educational Chaplaincy. In our partner parish of Bouye, the parish of or partner diocese of Bouye, we pray for the parish of Ngozi, Damascene Bagarubwira, Rector, Deo Nkunzimana, Deputy Rector, and we pray for the people of Enoch Cree, Cree Nation. We remember our partner parish of Bogombo in Bouye Diocese. In our day spring parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Dean and Rita Barr, Darla Judry, Dorothy Tangan. We pray for our siblings in Dayspring at St. Mary's Edgerton, St. Saviour's Vermilion, and St. Thomas Wainwright. We take time to pray for, for aloud or in the silence of our hearts for all whom we now name, remembering especially Kathy and Drew, Dan, Don, Janiah, Jimmy, Leon, Rob, Stephen, Trevor, Tricia and Dolores, Norm and Elizabeth. We pray for all members of the Canadian Armed Forces, remembering especially the chaplains at Garrison Wainwright, Rob, Eduardo, Balamu, and Kent. In joy and humility, let us pray to the Creator of the universe, saying, Lord, grant us peace. By the good news of our salvation brought to Mary by the angel, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the mystery of the Word made flesh, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the birth and time of the timeless Son of God, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the manifestation of the King of glory to the shepherds and magi, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the submission of the Maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the baptism of the Son of God in the river Jordan, 
Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. Grant that the kingdoms of this Lord may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. Amen. At this point in the service, we move into a period of confession and absolution. When we confess that we have sinned, it allows us to share with God our acknowledgement that we are not perfect, that we've made mistakes, that we have done things we shouldn't have done, that we have left things undone that we should have done. Um, and it allows us the opportunity to really take those things off of our own chest, sort of relieve those anxieties that are caused by the mistakes that we make um, and place them in God's hands. And then we have the opportunity to recognize that when we truly do confess our sins and we, and we are, you know, we're willing to try and not make those same mistakes again, that we are open to receiving God's forgiveness, which is so freely given. And so I invite you into a time of confession and then to receive a time of absolution or forgiveness of your sin. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of our son, your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your way and walk, delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. At this point now in the service, we would be moving into our celebration of the Eucharist and we begin with the preparation of the gifts. So as I would prepare the altar, the bread and the wine and, and all of the the things that it requires for us to use for the Eucharist, we would be singing a hymn. In this case, the hymn we would be singing was The Love of Jesus Calls Us. Then we would have a prayer over the gifts to say thank you to God for um, sharing with us the bounty of God's universe that we then share back with God through the church. And then the great thanksgiving or the prayer. And then we would continue with the Lord's Prayer. So and now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, in whatever form or language that is comfortable for you, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I will share with you now the blessing for a, the season of incarnation. May the God of infinite goodness scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your hearts with holiness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and all those whom you love and pray for on this glorious day and forevermore. Amen. Our final hymn that we would sing now if we were in church was going to be Be Thou My Vision, um, and but we will have a dismissal. Go forth as day spring people, serve the Lord by sharing his light. So we shall, thanks be to God. Quick reminder for my Vervillian folks that um, two weeks from today, there will be a quick vestry, uh, there will be a, vest, a potluck lunch after church and then a vestry meeting um, immediately following that because we need to prepare for our annual meeting, which will be on the 18th of February after church. But all the AGM reports need to be submitted to me by the 28th of January so I can get the annual report booklets out to everybody ahead of the meeting because we are not going to take time to read through all the reports at the meeting read through the report ahead of time and then highlight your questions and then send them to me or whoever's the 
pertinent person so that we can bring answers um, carefully carefully um, researched for you to the actual meeting. Because if you have a meeting, uh, have a question at the meeting, chances are somebody else is wondering the same thing. So that's happening then. Just a reminder, I will not be in Vermilion on, on Monday. I've had a conflict. I was supposed to be at the um, Vermilion Lodge for a 1030 Eucharist. That's been bumped to February, and I'll tell you the date at a later date when I have it in hand. Um, and I'm beginning to think that maybe it's not a bad idea that I have to be um, only Zooming on Monday because... I think I'm coming down with something. My throat is uh, starting to close over a little bit. and gets kind of sore. And I'm feeling a little wonky. So please pray for, <laughs> pray that I recover from um, what seems to be a bit of a cold happening. Um, could just be exhaustion. But either way, too much to do. Can't get sick. So please pray for healing for me and for all those who are who are feeling feeling the weather and feeling the, the winter doldrums. Um, but please also stay safe. Stay home if you can. Um, keep your heat on, keep the out the air intake for your furnaces. If you have an outdoor one and you're in a cold climate, um, we've heard of several people who it's frozen over, which stops the pilot light from being able to light and your house gets cold. So make sure that that's, um, keep an eye on that. Make sure it's not snowed over or frozen over. Um, keep lots of blankets, drink lots of hot tea, things like that. Maybe a hot toddy, little, little something extra in your, in your drink. Um, but just enjoy being with the family and friends you have, put on Netflix, whatever it takes to just be, but please be safe. Please be safe. I will see you again tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel and each day next week. God bless you. It's good to be back.